Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video So in this video, I'm gonna explore uh, a model I have made in 2018, Mars 3 Okay, so today is Mars, uh, day 12, 2023 So it's been a long, long time And from that point, I didn't check this model until now, I'm gonna do it live. <laughs> Just you're gonna see my reaction uh, to you know, uh, because of course after all these years, I have improved massively in terms of scripting and even in general programming. I also became a man with a beard instead of a <laughs> of a little boy with a chicken voice. So yeah, let's get into it and let's see. <laughs> All right, so try the studio and let's see. I have no idea. So we're going to see. I'm going to tell you the some of the, the things that uh, like little things that could have been better pretty easily. Uh, but yeah, OK. All right, let's see. <laughs> First of all, let's see if this works. That's the thing. Oh man, what's going on here? Why oh, there is multiple pickaxes? Oh. Oh, what? Uh, okay. Well, anyway, let's just put them inside of, uh, I guess in replicated storage. Oh, oh sorry. Uh, in store pack, I think. Possibly. Table box temporary in search. No idea what's that. Anyway, let's see what we have here. Okay, so there is a readme, and let's see. Created by Kosu Taku. Well, right now I'm called Koda Taku, but yeah. Took me like five hours, uh-huh. <laughs> all right, it's from the toolbox, all right. Uh, step guide, setup guide. All right, let's see if the setup guide works or not. <laughs> Get the screen GUI minor and put it in start of GUI. Get the screen GUI. Uh, minor, okay, and put it into starter GUI. Sure, let's do that. I don't know even if it still works or not, to be honest. Get the tool pickaxe. By the way, I'm just gonna go with one of these guys. I think there's probably just multi like different configurations, maybe. So let's just go with one pickaxe so we don't confuse stuff, okay? Get the tool pickaxe and put it in starter pack. Oh, yeah, I did. Uh, get the scratch manager, put it in server script service. Manager, service, script, service, get the folder events, put it in replicate storage, let's go, replicate storage, and subscribe to the channel code, code <laughs> Okay, if you use that in a released game, you should give Chris this pickaxe, the description we gave, or sorry to give, enjoy or something. Uh, I ju I'm just gonna steal it, sorry. <laughs> anyway, delete the model, pickaxe package. Uh, where is the pickaxe pack? Oh, this, oh, sorry. So I have to actually put this whole thing into the starter pack. Okay, interesting. And then it's just a matter of delete the model pickaxe package. Okay. But before I delete that, let's see how to make mineable blocks. But first, let's actually see if, if this even works. Uh, okay. Yes, okay. I have no idea what's that all about. Oh, it seems like it's inserted. <laughs> there is a toolbox bug, bug, I think. Somehow it just inserted that model when I played the game. Hopefully it won't happen again. Oh man, come on, bro. Cancel. Oh my god. This is so stupid. Don't know why this bug is in there. Anyways, uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and delete this stuff just to make sure nothing's crazy going on. Alright, so I have the pickaxe. Doesn't seem like there is anything in the output yet. Um, and even if I click, nothing happens. So yeah, now let's actually see what we got inside the readme. Make a model named blocks in the workspace. Okay, sure, folder. I'm gonna call this blocks. Put it in your ORs or blocks. The OR should be a part union or a mesh. Uh, okay, sure. Uh, right, I'm gonna create a little part. Uh, okay, sure, sure, sure. 
just like that let's say this all right let's make it something like a rock uh, maybe salt uh, what no salt what this is liberty reflux i guess but i meant slate there you go slate i like this material to be honest for rocks so okay fine now what we do we put that inside the blocks all right all right place in the or a int value name durability and sets value as you wish all right value um int value durability hopefully this even works <laughs> all right durability and just making sure that the name matches exactly okay 10 for example i guess uh int value name durability and then max durability it should probably be the same right yeah Probably max durability 10. I think this max durability is just for the slider essentially. So, and it's important to set its value to the value that you set to the durability value. Nice. If you wish that when this block gets destroyed by the player, it drops items, then you should make an int value name drop and set its value to how much items. <laughs> drop, okay. All right, you set it to how much you want of items let's say nine <laughs> just why not okay then you should make it name drop and set the value to how much items it's gonna drop however it doesn't accept zero or less than zero by the way the dropped item is gonna have a string value named item without any value on it okay note this in the end means that it's required and not optional to work properly okay anyway so let's try if this works i have no idea this is so old um I don't even remember the code that is inside of this thing, you know. Crazy stuff. But we're gonna see what's gonna happen there. Uh, let's remove this stupid stuff. Uh, there is some stupid bug in the toolbox. Okay. So, well, why this doesn't work? <laughs> oh my god, like, bro, what? And I'm not getting anything lit the output all right let me make sure that the names are are same make a model named blocks all right the or should be a part <laughs> that you created that doesn't support uh, int value named durability maxer. so i don't know it doesn't seem like to work so let's see let's dissect this and see what's going on here Okay. Oh man, I'm seeing some big stuff right away. But anyways, <laughs> let's see what we have here. What's what's going wrong essentially? Um, I guess we should start actually by. Oh man, this is pretty bad security problem. Let's see. Uh, anyways, let's go to. Let's remove this pickaxe package by the way. Let's go to pickaxe core okay wait for child sound collect okay interesting this spawn time i'm using mouse the alarm gate mouse crazy stuff well there is a lot of stuff okay button one down but what's going wrong here that's the real deal if he's equipped and bin target mouse target target parent dot name equal blocks model name hmm hmm no idea if the one this one doesn't work let's see uh is equipped okay let's see that this actually works let's put a breakpoint here let's see what's gonna happen Ah oh, man, this, this stupid bug, right? There you go. Nice. So as you can see, when I clicked, it, it hit the breakpoint. Now let's go over it. Step into. So it is equipped. Nice. It got the mouse target. How can I grab the cold stack again? 
like what is it called call stack i think oh actually i think i'm gonna need the watch okay there you go so here we go i'm seeing what's happening here and attack bin what is target right now and the target right now is the base plate Okay, interesting. Well, I'm just gonna mute this thing because it's annoying. Anyway, step into target. Okay, so the target uh, parent name is not equal to what? To blocks model name. Well, that's true in this case, so okay, nice uh all right let's play again let's try to right now target the block and see what's gonna happen there oh man all right let's go all right i did i hit that thing or no i don't think i did let me just repeat <laughs> The thing is that I made is that I'm using the mouse to you know the target, not the character, uh, which is kind of annoying. I mean, that's what you would expect in other games, but yeah. So it's actually, there you go. Now the target should be up to go. So script and now step into, step into, surely we're equipped. Nice. Target is what? Target. Um, okay, let's go through this. And then we have the target. Now the target is a part, part that is anchored false. What is just the name? I, or you know what? Just go ahead and complete this stuff. Step into. Oh, why? Why just what? If target or parent dot name is equal equal to blocks model name but what is blocks model name it seems to somehow jump on it um so blocks heart what but what is blocks model name let's oh, okay i see what's the problem here it should be like this okay the readme is is false i think the readme have told me to do a, a big b <laughs> but anyway let's try now out let's draw let's not try this out and you know what so th this is really annoying me this toolbox box this toolbox bug i'm just gonna save the game you know uh real quick and 2018 let's go save and let's go out of this it's so annoying uh roblox if you're watching this please fix this book <laughs> okay let's see what we have oh my it's still man i have to actually quit my stupid roblox the whole thing just to fix this stupid bug oh my god that is disgusting <laughs> okay well you know what task manager and you know the drill. Where is, where are you? I'm gonna kill you right now in task. Oh, it's not called a kill. All right, we're not on Linux, seems like. Anyways, Roblox Studio. All right. Seems like Windows is, is carefully choosing their words to not say kill task. They say in task, <laughs> but yeah, anyways, Linux doesn't care. It just tells you kill task. All right, so <laughs> let's try right now if this works. And hopefully that bug is still like, it's not there anymore. Yeah, it seems like, all right, so, okay. Oh, sorry, I forgot the, the breakpoint right there. And let's try it now, play. Okay, now. All right, I'm getting that little stupid slider with low color theory in. <laughs> you know, red, blue, and yellow is like the worst 
color combination you can ever choose but <laughs> anyways and even black here man man bro anyway let's see if this even works all right yeah let's go and i get my little droppings there but i cannot actually grab them up but in we go to workspace oh man i put them in the workspace that's pretty bad idea <laughs> but anyways so each item have like a boolean value oh and they despawn after some time okay i see <laughs> interesting i mean at least it works and one of the things that first should be fixed here uh, because it's torturing my eyes is the um the gy right the gy so start gy minor frame let's at least fix this bro um frame visible i think right yeah there you go all right so this is it so the back the bar all right crazy stuff is going oh there's another local script here <laughs> okay uh how is doing that of the size all right text percentage Okay, anyways, <laughs> there's a lot of stupid stuff, but anyway, I'm just gonna do some stuff, all right? So, uh, first of all, I'd like to make this a little bit more friendlier. First of all, let's make this maybe a dark value, kind of, like, maybe 30. Uh, you cannot go, like, if you're not that good at color theory, at least go with the mono monochrome colors, like, just from black to white, because they're easier to get right. Otherwise, you could go to colors.co and make it work. You can find the link in the description, I think. And, of course, this is not sponsored. This is just a recommendation. Hopefully, I'm not, I am, but I'm not. So, anyways, <laughs> back... All right, let's go. Or maybe we could actually go with the yellow. Yellow. Just like it was, essentially. Although a bit like that. And the worst thing is the border. <laughs> let's remove the borders. Okay, interesting. Oh yeah, that's why I did the borders because it looks horrible. <laughs> the colors together so uh yeah i see background color now are you gonna do it like oh yeah this is still monochrome it's just that it's not white and black right all right white is good or just say maybe this and maybe let's make the percentage uh white i guess how do you make oh yeah text color okay what yo what oh sorry okay white like this although it doesn't look uh so maybe the opposite but you know what let's leave it as black for now okay fine let's not waste a lot of time. and of course there's a new feature of roblox which is the ui corner there you go interesting instantly good so control shift v to the back and there you go now at least it should be a little bit better in terms of gy visible test run play all right let's see what's gonna happen there all righty <laughs> Output. Oh man, what's going on with Roblox again? <laughs> Roblox likes to play games a lot. Mm -hmm. Let me make sure. Okay, what's going on right now, bro? Come on, <laughs> play. Like, bro, what? Did I found some other bug or something? This is great. All right, finally. Oh my god! Did it really have to look 
took took that whole time. By the way, I don't hear any sounds anymore. She's crazy. And oh yeah, the bar, look at that. It's still rectangular. So let's make that to uh, that way. Or maybe, maybe, I'm not exactly sure, but maybe we could just say flip descendants for the back. Uh, actually, no, the bar is not a descendant of the back thing. And I wonder why I did that, to be honest. Um, what? Back bar. How? Why? <laughs> I mean, I could have just put the bar inside the back, but right now I have to search where that's the thing. Um, so where's the bar now? So frame dot bar, but now it's actually becoming back dot bar. And of course, should go after Lauren back. Hopefully that's the only change I have to do. <laughs> All right, gee, let's see if that even works. Bar is not a valid member of frame. Okay, so I'm also doing it here. So let's actually change that. Uh, let's see what I'm doing that bar. Okay. All right, interesting, not bad, not bad. So here, change this to, that's why you have to make variables. <laughs> so it's easier to change. So minor.bar, now instead of minor.bar, you probably have to look for back and yeah, right here, okay. So essentially instead of minor, we're gonna go with back, back bar. And don't ask me about the namings, you know. <laughs> uh, I'm always bad at namings, so. But yeah, let's go. Let's see. Run. Uh, righty. And let's see. Alrighty. Interesting. Now it's actually descendant of that thing. And let's try to make it now that uh, crop clip descendant. I'm not sure if it works with the UI corner or not, but let's see. If it does, it would be nice. Let's see. Otherwise, we're going to put a UI corner there too. It doesn't seem like it's working, so, man. Anyway, uh, although one thing though is, says, uh, what, hold on, the back. Well, since the, the bar is inside the back now, we don't need to position anything right now, I think. Uh, maybe, so, uh, let's see, zero, what? Uh, anchor point. Why oh, it's doing it like that? All right. Does this, does that work? Let's see. I mean, it should, but I don't know. All right, it works, interestingly enough. We could add some tween, but I don't want to go that crazy now. I'm just trying to fix some things. So bar, and let's make a little UI corner there. And let's see. All right. And there you go, beautiful. Much more beautiful right now. All righty, interesting. Let's go. And yeah. Now, what we have to do. Now, let's go to the scripting side of things. While we do. No, no, no. While we do. At least, at least if you're going to go with this way, at least say task.wait instead of wait. Because wait is deprecated. Uh, but the better way, you know, with my standard is to... Go with run service, game get service, run service, you know, and then essentially say run service dot render step, or you could say heartbeat or whatever you want. Let's go with render step because why not? Function and end. And as, as simple as that. All right, now it's going to run every frame before rendering essentially. So 
Uh, that should be the same thing, although, as I said, it's a better, better practice to use run service instead of waiting stuff up. And there you go. Easy. All right, that's the first thing that I've noticed. All right, let's see the other scripts too. Let's see if we can find something crazy. There is a lot of things crazy here, but... <laughs> First of all, I shouldn't actually use the mouse anymore. It's deprecated. So I guess maybe we could change that, possibly. And in fact, I don't even want to have, like, I shouldn't use the mouse. Hmm, mouse. Because, you know, the thing is, when you are in games, mostly you're not expecting to click the block. You're expecting to go in front of the block. So what you should do, well, sorry, what you should do is essentially cast a ray from the character's uh, human way root part. But uh, let's start by actually just making the same thing, although with a better practice. That's what I'm kind of focusing on here. I'm just not trying to make something new. I'm just trying to fix the the, the existing stuff, right? So local mouse. Now instead of mouse, we're gonna remove the mouse entirely, and instead we're gonna have local user input service. It's equal to game get service user input service. Let's go. And of course, I also noticed the players. Uh, this is a pretty bad way to get the players service. Okay, <laughs> game dot players. Why? Too simply because. In the local script, in the client, the user can go ahead and change like a cheater, you know, or some hacker or whatever. Although I don't like to call them hackers because most cheaters aren't really like real hackers. They're just cheaters and exploiters, you could say. But anyways, uh, all right. You probably won't find a real hacker hacking Roblox games, you know. <laughs> but anyways, so game at least... Unless there is some real, really wild uh, reason uh, about it. Okay, anyways, uh, like maybe because he wants to prove a point to me that there is hackers on Roblox, possibly. So, <laughs> anyways, all right. So let's say players dot local player and instead of PLR, bro, player. Okay, player. Why not? Why PLR? You know, like we where are. We are in 2023, although I wrote this code in 2018, right? So, but yeah, anyways, control H, change PLR to player. And I have another kind of way of doing, oh my God, look at that. It's like each name is like a different kind of style. It's like you, some names are like, oh man. It's weird, crazy stuff. Anyways, let's let's call it like that, player, okay? All uh, right. I don't want to stay here forever changing variable names, so I'm not going to go that crazy about it, but this is just an example for you, <laughs> okay? So player, there you go, players. Now players.localPlayer, let's go. The tool, damage the cooldown, the range. I'd recommend to put such values, uh, constants like this in one place instead of <laughs> having each thing in its own world there you go the spawn time okay and also do one other thing which is to make the constants some particular uh you know style just like that control h cooldown make it cooldown oh man what did i should be like this okay did i actually not change all of them hold on a second oh yeah i did change all of them nice all right, so what about range, 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 and yeah, let's go. Same thing here. 
All right, blocks model name, change that up. There you go. Durability name, okay. Okay, nice. And here the spawn time. The spawn time. All right, let's go. And that's essentially it for the constants, just like that. And another thing I'd like to always put, uh, like the Roblox uh, instances to start with, with s such a style, essentially, just like spawn location, base plate, workspace, etc. Just so it fits with the other Roblox objects well, in terms of naming, as you can see here. So you can also change that here now. Durability name durability. Okay, interesting. Although I'd better, you know, create a module called configuration or something like that and then put this stuff there. But anyways, for now, let's just go ahead and fix the mouse stuff. So here we have range. For some reason, range have... Oh, I think... I think I didn't replace all the ranges, maybe. Hold on a second. Um, let's see. No, it's fine now, I guess, maybe. So next up is the mouse. So let's remove this stupid stuff. So instead of mouse, the button one down, you have to go ahead and say, um, user input service dot mouse. Hold on, what? No, not mouse. Um, input. So input begun or the input ended or input ended. So there is button one down and down means that the input have begun. And when the user lift up the mouse button, that means ended. Okay. So in this case, if we want to replicate the same exact behavior, we got to go with input begin in this case. And let's go with connect um, function. Now, essentially uh, you want to, to, to choose between input begun and input ended depending on when do you want to trigger the input? Do you want, for example, for the user to press down when when the user just press down the hold down the key, then you want to immediately fire, or you want to wait until the user lift up his finger from the key or from the mouse button. If you want that the latter, you have to use input ended instead of input begun. So hopefully that makes sense. Here we could say input object, and just so we can get some type checking we could uh, tell it what is this this is an input object at least that's what we're expecting um, and also i'd like to actually make this into its own function instead of like this so we could say on input uh, i also like to call my functions like this local function on input so the event connection the the, the stuff like this i like to call it with on at the start meaning that this is hooked to some event, essentially. When something happens, this should happen, okay? This function should trigger. But anyways, uh, here we have input object. Oopsies, input object. And I'd like this naming for the parameters because if you have noticed here in input begun, uh, it's gonna tell you what Roblox is naming their stuff, okay? And in this case, look at that, it's called input and then the, the type is input object and the other guy is called game process event, although it doesn't uh, seem to be visible here. But anyways, let me show you. So this is, should be called input and it is an input object. And then again, game process event. All right, game process event, and this should be a Boolean. Okay, now if game process event, essentially, let's say, for example, the user is chatting, like he's typing something in a GUI or interacting with the GUI or something like that, where the engine have consumed that event, then what we want to do, we want to ignore that event. Okay. So for example, if uh, the user is chatting, you know, 
and he clicked on W one or A or A S or S and D. If you don't do if game processed event then return end, uh, then what's gonna happen is that it's <laughs> while you're chatting and the user says, "Whoa, he's gonna move forward because he pressed W." So what you do is you say if game processed event. That means that Roblox have consumed that event somehow, maybe using a GUI probably, then, then return end. So we're just going to return from this function. We're going to quit this function. We're going to end the execution of this function. And by the way, this will return nothing. This is, of course, type checking. This is the new uh, Lua, Lua, right? I, I like to call it like that, but essentially it's Lua and you. Um, <laughs> so yeah, anyways, it returns nothing. And it takes these two parameters. Anyways, so now we're gonna check if input dot and the nice thing about type checking, you also get free auto completion. So if user input type dot what dot uh, oh sorry if input dot user input type is equal to enum dot user input type dot now <laughs> Here we go. Which stuff you want? Do you want the keyboard, the gyro, the non, the focus? As you can see, the touch for, for uh, you know, phones and stuff like that, and iPads, etc. There's even game pads for you know controllers, Xbox controllers, etc. As you can see, user input uh, user input service is much much better. Uh, then the old mouse thing, but anyways here just to replicate the same exact thing We're just gonna go with dot mouse button one Then because here as you can see button one for the mouse. Okay, there you go now here We're sure that game process event is equal to false and we're sure that input dot user input type is Equal equal to mouse button now you could do the same exact thing here So you could just invert this condition if not then return essentially but the thing is, this won't work if we're handling multiple event types that we want to do later on. And we probably want to do that later on. So I'm just going to keep it like this. So if input dot user input type, but really it's just a preference, really. It doesn't change much. Anyways, if input dot user input type, okay, nice. Now we could just essentially, uh, and here we go. This is if it's equipped. And in fact, I checked if it's equipped. But you know what? Let's just go step by step and make it better step by step. All right, so I'm just gonna try to actually just go ahead and copy this and see if it works, essentially. So here, let's remove this mouse button one down and stuff like that because, because we have copied that stuff over. Uh, or you know what, I'm just gonna comment it out just for reference and a lot of developers, and in fact, you may want to do this essentially when you have some old code that you don't want anymore, instead of removing it, you can just comment it out to keep it as a reference or let's say you want, anyway, this is kind of like the, this code doesn't exist anymore in the script, doesn't uh, execute anymore, but it's still there if you want it later on or you want it as a reference essentially. But anyways, so here we have to get something using the mouse, which is the target, as you can see. But now uh, to get the target using the, like if you want to replicate exactly or at least almost exactly what uh, the mouse API was doing of Roblox, and then what we should do, we should essentially cast a ray uh, from the user's camera, you know, in, in the user's camera's direction, essentially, and get whatever the user is looking at um, into the mouse, of course. So how we can do that? Well, it's kind of not as simple as seeing mouse.target, but we're gonna see, it's pretty not that hard. So first of all, we need to get the camera though. So the camera is, well, since we're gonna be using this a lot, so we'll just say local camera is equal to workspace dot current camera. Don't use cam dot camera, use dot current camera. Because again, I'm not exactly sure, but maybe the cheater can change the name of the camera. But the workspace, the cheater cannot change the the property name of current camera. And in fact, if you go to workspace, you could see that the current camera value property is called current camera and it's set to an object, which is the camera. It's referring to the camera object uh, that Roblox is using, that the engine is using. So there you go. Uh, okay, And of course, you can only use this in the client because the client is the one that is running on the, the player's machine and the camera is not on the server, is on the player's machine. But anyways, 
each player, each client have their own camera, okay? And by the way, just a note here is that the cheater have full access to his camera. So let's say someone is, like you have some game that the players maybe have their a wall in front of them or something, or let's say even a, a survival game or something. But essentially you want to hide something from all the players. And this is a really important part of your game's gameplay. So if someone is able to see through your optic, then it is unfair, then you need to do something about it. Because in fact, the player, like the client can is free to do whatever he wants with the camera. I mean, he have the, the, the control to do whatever he wants because the camera is part of the client. It's not part of the server. So let's say there is a solution. For example, what you could do is that the hidden thing, instead of just hiding it, like sitting the transparency in the client or in the server or whatever, because even if you've done it in the server, yes, it will replicate to the client, but then he can change it locally to be not transparent. So what you should actually do, you should remove it from the server, from the client's uh, computer, okay? Or even not put it until the user is actually able to see that information, that model, that what, whatever it is, okay? So it shouldn't be there in the, in the first place. It shouldn't be in the client. It should be only in the server. Then when the, the user is able to see it, then he can see it, okay? So anyways, and in fact, I noticed that in a lot of games where, for example, maybe even it's not, I'm not even a cheater, but essentially there was some models that didn't Lloyd because of some problem. And I could have seen through some some models like you know let, let, let us not see let's not say which game but anyway got the point <laughs> so local target so yeah local target okay so now we got the camera now we have to get the camera them well it's camera and mouse ray but essentially it's camera to mouse ray okay uh, but we could just say mouse ray, you know, anyway, equal to uh, camera viewport point array, and then you could give it the mouse location X and Y in the screen. So it can give you a ray, and the ray essentially is like a vector in some sort. Although, I mean, of course, formally it's called a ray, right? It's not a vector. A vector is not a ray, okay? It's, they're different in some sense. Uh, but here, I'm not trying to give you a formal definition like a Wikipedia or your mathematics teacher. I'm just trying to make things simple. Okay, so yeah. All right, local mouse ray. And that's the thing, like when, you, when, you, when you're watching tutorials, it's like, especially YouTube tutorials, which are usually informal, like don't, like, <laughs> what can I say? They're not always correct 100%. That's why it's maybe easier to understand, you know, but if you want the correct definition that you got to look for formal resources. But anyways, uh, this is not the topic of the video right now. Anyways, local mouse array. So here we need the mouse location. So we can get the mouse location using uh, user input service, of course, and get mouse location, of course. Also, the mouse is part of the client, so you cannot do this stuff in the server. And that's why we're actually doing it here anyways. So local mouse location, user input service, get mouse location, then local mouse ray, get camera viewport point to ray, then say mouse location dot X, and then here mouse location dot Y. And there you go. There's also a depth uh, variable, which I don't understand fully yet, to be honest, but it's kind of useless, at least for me. I didn't really have the use for it yet. So yeah, there you go. Now we got a mouse ray and the ray essentially holds, it holds a direction and origin, and you can also get a unit vector. So the direction is where the ray is looking. So essentially in this case where the camera is looking, the direction of the camera, the origin is essentially gonna be the, the, the camera's location, the, the position of the camera if you want. And the, the unit, it will give you like the, the direction of the camera, but with magnitude of one. It's just gonna make sure it's magnitude of one. Uh, so yeah. Now what we could do, we could cast that ray using workspace. 
cast raycast sorry raycast then you see mouse ray dot origin and then mouse ray dot direction i'm not exactly sure if mouse ray will always be unit vector but just to be safe you should always say dot unit times at least in this case i mean i'm only only interested in the direction of the camera then i can give it whatever uh, range i want so here we can say the mouse range here or something like that or we can even say range can even give it this range that we have as a constant even all right so that's essentially it and of course there is raycast params all right so here i'm gonna call this mouse raycast params you can call it whichever you want but yeah and then here i can make it global local mouse raycast params is equal to raycast params dot new and there you go interesting so the problem with this way of doing it is that it won't filter out the character but let's not get ahead of ourselves let's first of all continue this stuff so now what is the target now this gives us a raycast result and the, this raycast result contains a lot of beautiful stuff information but what we're interested in so as you can see there's instance position normal of the surface that got hit to the distance etc but in my case i'm interested into the instance for a local target raycast result dot instance now if target dot parent dot name equal equal to blocks model name then do something if target dot parent dot name okay interesting and by the way one thing is that I should also check if target is there before checking if there is a parent and before checking even if there is a name but I should at least make sure that target is there if target and target or parent dot name and I can do this without any error you know why because in fact uh, if this is not true then this won't even be checked by Roblox so even if this is leads to an error it won't even be run in the first place so it won't throw an error uh, that's why we do it like this but uh, I think a better way of doing this here is to essentially check if there is a raycast result in the first place if there is not so if not raycast result of rate or you can say if raycast result is equal equal to nil if, then what you could say say return and and there you go just so we can return from the function exit from the function completely essentially but to be honest since you could have some other you know in in like input stuff there i think it's more better to say if raycast result in this case then do something essentially so if raycast results then do this stuff all right so oh my god that's a big big thing so it shouldn't happen like this but soon enough we'll actually get rid of this guy uh, which is going to be even better but we'll see anyway we'll see later on anyways so if raycast result then that and now this should be fine i mean we replicated the this stuff but in a bad, bad, better way of doing stuff. But now we're gonna have a little problem though, which is that when we click, nothing gonna happen. And that's to be expected because essentially, damage is not a valid member of folder, what we're talking about here. Damage is not a valid member of folder. what oh what oh yeah i changed something that i didn't that that i shouldn't change so this shouldn't change should be damage i think i mean if we go to replicate storage it's called uh damage all right interesting although this is also not so safe this is not safe at all you know uh the way i've done it here but we're gonna see later on this is a maybe even a topic for another video because uh so yeah but anyways all right so let's see all right all right back so let's see what we got there 
All right, so I fixed that thing. Now it should be fine. But before we go further into tests, let's see, print the target. We're gonna print the target and let's see what's gonna happen there. So you can see what is the target. Cause there is a little problem that we have to fix here with our new code, which is that. Well, it's saying part in this case, but if you do something like this, I guess. There you go. As you can see, it's actually capturing our own player's character. Okay. Now how to fix this. And in fact, also this way of checking if the tool is equipped is pretty bad, <laughs> pretty pr primitive. So here, what I'm doing is I'm checking if tool.parent.name is e not equal to backpack. So if it's not equal to backpack, then I'm just returning. This is so bad. I mean, it works, but it's bad. All right. Now the thing is I can at least do instead of not equal, I could say equal equal and then see here false and here true. Cause why not? Uh, otherwise, the better way of at least doing the same thing is to essentially instead just say return tool.para.name is equal to backpack. <laughs> as simple as that, you know. Um, return tool.para.name is equal to backpack. To check if it's, it is equipped. But the better way is to remove this whole thing, right? And the best way is to essentially look for the tool. Well, I'd like to actually call that tool. Uh, hold on a second. And why I'm saying tool up there? Oh, never mind. Okay, so here, let me make sure everything is fine. Okay, so tool, I like it to, to be like this. Anyway, let's go. All right, now here, what I have to say is tool.equipped connect to what to on equip some function called on equip notice that it gets a mouse there which i'm not going to use but yeah um tool equipped and of course tool in equipped on in equip okay now we're going to have local function on equipped uh, sorry, on equip like this. All right. Now on equipped, what it's gonna essentially do, it's actually should connect this input begun, okay? Now it should connect this input begun event. All right, and now I should actually uh, have like, let's say some some table for connections. This is how I like to do it. I mean, you could just do it like this, you know, connection is equal to nil, right? And then here you could say connection is equal to this. Then in the function in equipped, when the event of in equipped comes in, so on in equipped, what we could do, we could say connection disconnect, and there you go. Uh, but I'd like to do it like because most of the time you were going to have a lot of connections. So what I'd like to do is instead of that, I make that a table and I say for this in. So connection in, sorry, connection in connections. Do. So connection disconnect so for each connection and notice that I don't you don't do pairs anymore because there is a new feature in Roblox called generalized iteration I think if I remember well but essentially right now in Lua uh, of course Roblox Lua you can actually do it just like this without the pairs and it will automatically does its job and also there is another thing is that notice that here it should be an index of the connection but since I'm not going to use it I just do this all right so anyway now this, if you do, if you do print, you know, this guy, then it is actually a variable, I guess, maybe, uh, but this is not supposed to be like this. You know. Yeah. Placeholder value, consider using a named variable, as you can see. I mean, it works, but it's not a good thing. I mean, this is supposed to be something that you don't use essentially, but anyways, so here, instead of connection equal to whatever, here you should use table.insert. You could either use table.insert and say connections, comma, that. 
or you could do this also like this connections then name your connection something whatever you want and then say equal to uh, to the connection essentially could go with this guy or this guy now I would probably go with the second way if I want to connect and disconnect individual connections but if you don't care about that you just don't care about that essentially just go with the first way of doing it um, but I guess just to keep that flexibility in I'm actually going to use this way of doing it just call your connection whatever then go through every connection and here you're going to actually get the connection name essentially right now in this in this uh, particular case but anyway so input begun equal to that stuff now on equipped we're going to disconnect all the connections and there you go now we don't even have to check for is equipped essentially uh, anymore because in fact this on input will be connected once the equipped function is in once in equipped it will get disconnected so this on input won't work anymore essentially so now I don't even have to check if it's equipped, hopefully. So I ruled out that one, which is amazing. And also, uh, we also had the problem of the character um, not being filtered by the array that we cast from the, from the camera to the mouse. So how we can do that? Well, every time you equip the tool, what you could do, um, you're going to have script.parent, well, which is essentially, not script, tool.parent, which is essentially the parent of the of the character is going to be the character. It's, well, so the thing is, uh, all right, storing back, okay. Let's continue. So I'm not even sure if what it was, oh yeah, we wanted to filter out the, uh, the character from the rays, the ray cast. Okay, so how you do it, essentially, as I said, I mean, in fact, let me try to, to show you how, what I'm talking about, okay? If you play the game, essentially, you go to workspace, you go to your character, which is in this case me, all right? So now when I check out this guy, when I equip the tool, notice the tool got added into my character. So now, who's the tool.parent? The tool.parent right now is my own character. But when I go back in equipped, what happens is that the tool goes back to my backpack. It, it's not, it's no longer the, the inside of the character. It's right now in the backpack. Uh, I don't really remember where is the backpack to be honest, by the way. <laughs> All right. Uh, I think it's in the player maybe? Yeah, there you go, the backpack, let's go, okay. So, in, in fact, I was checking before in the name of the parent to check if it's equipped or inequipped, essentially. But anyways, so that's essentially the case. So right now, what is, when when in, when equipped, what is the character, who, where is the character? So the character is tool.parent in this case, okay? So, and then what I'm going to do, and this will also make sure when I, you know, when the character dies, like when the player dies, the character won't be invalid after that that ha happened. Because in fact, we're checking which what is the we're we're updating the character uh, whenever the tool gets equipped again. Okay, so yeah. Now here, what we're gonna do? We're gonna say mouse raycast params that we have done before. This guy right here that we're passing to the raycast function right here. So we're gonna say mouse raycast param dot filter descendants instances which is equal to a table. Now I've seen some tutorials out there um, that, so, right? So filter descendant instances. Now, as I said, I've seen some people in other tutorials, what, did, what they're doing here, they're actually saying, let's say for example, character in this case, they're saying get descendants. So, so this is, well, it won't, it will work, I think. But it's, there's no need to do this, okay? Just just do a table, right? And then character, just like that. And the descendants will get, will be gotten like uh, automatically from Roblox, okay? Because this is filtered descendants instances. So e any, des any instance that you give it, it will get the descendants of that instance. So it's, you don't have to say get descendants, essentially. But anyways. So, uh, right, next up is... I think now, right now, it should work out for the the filtering essentially. 
2018. <laughs> Alrighty, let's go. So right now, as you can see, it works amazing. But now if I don't equip the, the thing, there you go. I can no longer do anything. But right now, as you can see, it's working amazing. All right, lovely. Let's go. Okay, interesting. So let's go back and see what we could also do next. The other thing is that I also noticed that the GY isn't visible anymore, uh, even when I inequip the thing. So, but the thing is where I actually change that GY stuff. So where's the GY? Player GY, wait for child. Oh yeah, I do it here in update bar, I think. And where we're making it visible, that's the, the real. Visible is equal to open. Where is open? Here in updates bar, okay. And I think that's the only place where we actually does that. Update bar here, I make it false, okay. So essentially it only goes false when uh, I see when uh, the attack it's like the, the object gets destroyed essentially interesting so what I could do minor dot visible so this is a pretty bad way to do it I guess but let's just use this update bar anyways although it's not really required but to be honest uh, I, I I guess let's just say let's just get this thing okay let's just get this thing let's use it okay so here on inequipped so when the tool gets inequipped what you should do local player GY get that get the minor and then make it minor dot visible is equal to false essentially and there you go. Maybe we could do it before even this connection stuff, possibly. Okay, let's play. So now, uh -huh. all right. Now when I inequip the tool, there you go. But when I equip it again, there you go. And now it's working, amazing. And that's how you do it. Uh, now we could just remove this thing as you can see so there is still a lot to fix here okay there's a lot a lot to fix here and I think I'm just gonna stop here if you want a part two of fixing this guy let me know and by the way this is pretty horrible in terms of exploiting <laughs> I just give I mean let me check my server Hold on a second. Yeah, I mean, essentially, I'm not doing it. <laughs> oh man, this is so bad. I'm not doing any any verification in the server. <laughs> I mean, right now, what you could do, for example, let's say an exploiter there is, he can fire that, let's say, animate tool, for example, this anim uh, remote. He can give it whatever. No, he cannot actually give it whatever player, but he can give it whatever tool and the server will go ahead and animate that tool, okay, with the slash animation. <laughs> so uh, the sound, same thing, it can, the exposure can give it whatever sound in the server, in the game, and it can play it for all the people, okay, for all the people in the server to hear. <laughs> Crazy stuff. Um... Same thing I believe for on server events. Here it's taking PLR. I don't know what star this is. I think he's talking about target. And please just don't do this. Just say the whole word, okay? Uh, the spawn time. And I'm also using the debris servers, which I'm not exactly sure, but I think it's probably deprecated. I don't know, but yeah. Replicate storage events, DST on server. Oh my God, this is the... <laughs> I think this is the baddest so far. Right now, you know what? The any explosion can go to this right here, this event, and call it with whatever target you have, okay? <laughs> whatever anything in the in the in the whole game, right? 
in the whole game he can fire that event and he can give it whatever he wants and the server will go happily without any checking anything without any verification it will destroy that thing <laughs> so i think the client could maybe even like give it the workspace or the man this is just so so bad <laughs> <laughs> this is so bad but i mean let me know if you want a part two uh, of fixing this crazy stuff because if we want to fix this whole thing right now we're, we're gonna stay forever <laughs> but let me know if you want part two part three even if that's a thing so yeah I, I think i'm just gonna stop here at this point and yeah goodbye everyone thank you so much for watching and please subscribe if you'd like to see more and goodbye